Hand. Hello and welcome to another edition of Senate 109. I'm Dennis at Digun Lui. The Senate in the week resumed plenary following a two-week recess. However, one hour after the commencement of sitting, it again adjourned in honor of late senator who represented Lagos East Senatorial District at Debayo Oshino, who died during the recess. Senators returning from three weeks recess the break was to mark one year anniversary of the ninth national assembly which has become the practice usually the first day of resumption is characterized by a consideration of pending motions but all that we are stepped down till the next plenary because of the death of senator adebayo oshinowo who represented lagos east senatorial district the senate paid tribute to its late chairman senate committee on industry and since uh, he's been here with us in the Senate, he's been a very calming influence. He's uh, a patriot, provided stability here in the Senate. Very, very, very sad for losing a man of uh, Oshinu. A very gentle man, very hardworking, and, and, and a very honest man. The Ninth Senate has so far lost four of its members. And on the first full day of plenary after resumption, the Senate received an executive communication from President Mohamed Buhari requesting the confirmation of Suleiman Sani from the Federal Capital Territory as career ambassador designate and 41 other non-career ambassadors. When this plenary took off behind closed doors, one hour after, President of the Senate Ahmed Lawan read President Mohamed Buhari's request for confirmation of appointments. Suleiman Sani from the Federal Capital Territory as career ambassador designate and 41 others as non career ambassadors designate. While using this opportunity to express my sincere appreciation to the distinguished Senate for the confirmation of career ambassadors earlier forwarded, it is my hope that this request will also receive your usual expeditious consideration. While thanking the President for sending the name of the career one. We want to say that uh, for the FCT, that the non-career has not been uh, uh, submitted. Senate adopted Senator Abba Moro's motion, urging security agencies to investigate and prosecute perpetrators of the attacks on Echori and Itaba communities in Benue State. The legislators, through a motion by Senator Ifan Yuba, observed the 2020 International Day of Parliament as it called for stock taking by Nigerian legislators at all levels. Parliaments all over the world are needed more than ever to put in place legislation to respond to the health and economic crisis occasioned by COVID-19 pandemic. And of course, um, ensuring that we always, we always uh, legislate on good governance. The National Assembly Joint Committee on Media and Publicity has called on the federal government to suspend the implementation of the 774,000 Public Works Program. The Chairman Senate Committee on Media and Public Affairs, That's Senator Ajibola Basiru, stated this when he briefed National Assembly correspondents on Senate's position on the program. Implementation of the 774,000 Public Works to be put on hold until implementation modalities is explained to the National Assembly. He explained that the National Assembly has been in support of the program right from inception.
Now, security is never far from the minds of the legislators and Senate Presidents. Ahmed Lawan in the week advised the Nigeria Police Force to ensure the implementation of community policing in all states of the Federation. Senator Lawan was speaking at a meeting with the Inspector General of Police, Mohamed Adamu, on measures to strengthen Nigeria's security structure through community policing. He also called for the recruitment of more police personnel for adequate security coverage. That has been implementing the community policing and this meeting is an opportunity for you to give us an update of where you have, where, which states you have implemented the community policing and how it happened and how successful it is. And those states that you have not will need a program, a line of activities. States 1, 2, 3, 10 will do you start the implementation so 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 dates. All the committees for the implementation of the community policing strategy have been inaugurated in almost all the states of the Federation where this level of um, selecting the community policing officers now we hope by August September we will complete the process. Let's now get the thoughts of some senators on recent happenings in the political space. The intervention by Mr. President in the APC crisis is timely. Timely in the sense that the, the party was heading to rocks. But fortunately enough, he is wise enough and he got good advisors to advise him on what to do. And the, what he did was the best thing to do for the party, having a caretaker committee dissolving on the, all the conflicting parties to have a new people to have a set of new people as caretaker committee and luckily enough he has taken a very good person who is well respected who was the former secretary of the party who knows everything about the party from the merger from the beginning of the merger to date so i believe it is a very welcome idea by Mr. President to bring up this caretaker committee and I have the belief seriously because of the integrity of the person in charge of the party a lot of things will be rectified because it's simply about interest so if he takes everybody along all the other issues are going to be resolved. I will say that uh, the President's intervention was very apt and timely and uh, it has really saved the party from the total collapse it has brought life back to APC and um, I can assure you that uh, APC is going to emerge stronger and uh, the caliber of person that is brought to chair the caretaker committee is somebody that has a lot of respect for the people and he is very humble and he is a go-getter, he is an achiever. So I have no doubt in my mind that he will be able to reconcile you know, the party and make it stronger and make it more prepared for the next election come 2023. APC has uh, its own crisis management resolution mechanism. What has happened is anomalous in all party politics. The agreement policy is always uh, it's always there. It is not new, it is everywhere in all parties, especially in Nigeria. Therefore, Mr. President has done the right thing by complying with the decision of our uh, neck of the party to dissolve the, uh, the NWC. I mean, I think Mr. President acted um, rightly. And I support the position of President Muhammad Buhari on, this, um, on the crisis. Um, it's a natural thing for a party like uh, APC that came to to power to have this, to have issues. Um, the president took time to look at the possibility of the party being able to resolve those crises, but it was uh, difficult until he came in. Like I said in one of the interviews I had, 
that um, if the president had acted much earlier, he would have been tagged a dictator. Mm -hmm. They would have asked, oh, he didn't allow us to solve, he just came. But at the time he did, it was just very ripe and ideal at that time for him to act, and he acted. And you could see that that brought stability instantly to our party. It is it was even much better that we had this crisis much earlier now than to have it towards the, the, towards the election time. That would have been more disastrous for our party. So this crisis has been able to open our eyes to uh, quite a number of members of the party and very much aware of some of the issues that are already in the, on the front burner before, before we move towards the election. So th many of those issues will be addressed before 2023 to make sure that the party is to maintain its leadership position as the only truly national party and the ruling party in Nigeria. So the stability of uh, APC is the stability of Nigeria. It pays um, us to make sure the APC is stabilized because in APC lies the hope of this country. In APC lies the emancipation of the people. So to me, um, it was very timely and uh, contrary to what the opposition was saying, the president acted as at the time where he was expected as the leader of the party to act. And we are happy that it's been resolved. The Federal Executive Council in the week approved funding for critical road constructions across the country. Let's now hear from the Chairman, Senate Committee on Works, on this development. The Federal Executive Council approved the rehabilitation and reconstruction of a number of roads. Uh, those roads are in very bad condition. And um, it is a step in the right direction because uh, road users, uh, particularly in those areas, complain bitterly to the ministry and even to the National Assembly. Uh, these roads are bad. A number of motions have been passed. Resolutions were made at the National Assembly and posed to the executive. So I must say that I'm very pleased with the response of the executive. Um, it is a response uh, for the yearnings and aspirations of Nigerians. Um, Nigerians called for the rehabilitation of these roads and uh, government responded positively. And uh, uh, what is required now is to supervise and ensure that uh, the reconstruction and the rehabilitation of these roads are done in good time, particularly that uh, the rainy season is now on and uh, if the roads are not rehabilitated, uh, it will get worse. M movement of goods and also transportation of persons will be very, very difficult. So uh, it is a way of easing, you know, movement of uh, uh, people and also of goods uh, to various parts of the country. And uh, one particular thing about this road is that uh, they cut across all the geopolitical zones. If you are going to the southwest, you need those roads. If you are coming to the northwest, you need these roads. If you are coming to the north central, you also need these roads. If you are going to the south, south and south east, you also need these roads. So uh, it is so vital that uh, uh, you know, the government responded you know, very well. So uh, we are hoping that uh, uh, the contractors will move immediately and accelerate you know, the space of work. Less than four weeks after the Senate Committee on Aviation met with the leaders of Aviation Workers Union, 
it met with the Minister of Aviation, Hadi Surika, to brief it on the modalities for the planned resumption of flights and to address issues raised by the unions. So it is very important that we are here. And I think I must equally emphasize that as we gradually move towards the end of this year, we'll be looking at um, uh, areas that will require legislative assistance in the area of budgeting. The minister explained that reopening of the airports will be in phases. First phase to start from July 8 with stringent safety observations as the cabins are being treated to have less contagious risk level. Staggering is a clever way from us to be able to, one, test run the system, two, be able to improve our preparedness, uh, three, uh, we thought of the job, job locations of these airports. If you don't have a face mask to start with, you are not even going to be allowed into the terminal. One of the issues raised was the need for recertification of pilots, aircraft and facilities before the resumption. It goes beyond just setting out the protocols on paper. Those operators need to queue with the regulators. And so we must be precautious in all that we do. But the truth of the matter is the world has shut down globally. All the training institutions have shut down. Not all the pilots are out of currency. We have the training captains and the line check captains and we are using those who are still current to check the other pilots. The ministry and its agencies called on all passengers to give maximum cooperation to airport staff, especially on safety precautions. Well, I think the ambition is uh, ministry set to <clears throat> unlock the airport. It's going to be in segments. Uh, on the 8th of this month, the first uh, segment of um, airports will commence um, operation. Um, Lagos, Abuja, Kano, Portacourt, Oweri. They commence operation, then on the 11th, three days after, some other airport will follow <coughs> in that order, then on that branch in the, on the 15th. So hopefully within the next uh, three weeks, um, the plane will start flying. And that will of course help to open up the Nigerian economy. And the colleague granted the safety of people who are known for uh, traveling by air. You know, you have a class of people that the nature of their job and um, the task of the job demands that they fly. So um, all necessary um, steps to guarantee um, the safety of people at airports is put in place. In essence, they've uh, carried out a lot of fumigations to ensure that uh, the environment is clean and safe for people to, to move around. The vehicle introduced some mechanized uh, system of uh, checking, making sure that people comply with directives and uh, making sure that the steps that are to be taken are respected. Uh, social distances must be maintained within the airport and uh, there's a lot of restriction are put in place to ensure that um, nobody breach the regulations, uh, the laws that have been put in place for the safety of everyone, irrespective of your position, you must comply with those directives uh, for everybody to be safe. So by and large, um, I'm sure that um, everything is set. The, the minister was in the National Assembly where we raised issues regarding the welfare of workers because uh, not quite long, some four weeks ago, the leaders of the unions came to the National Assembly to threaten a strike. And um, we felt that was too high a risk to <coughs> to ignore. Um, it's better to have uh, many strikes, long strikes by labor, than to have one crash. So um, we have um, been able to extract um, 
assurance from the Minister of Aviation, Senator Heidi Serica, that um, there's no problem about salaries of workers. So, um, um, all those, all the issues that uh, to us, from our own point of view, needed to be addressed, seems to have been addressed by the Minister, and we have no doubt in our mind that uh, the airports be unlocked mm -hmm. as from uh, the eighth of this month. Of course, COVID-19 is still very much around and with increasing cases of community transmission, what advice do legislators have in terms of Nigerians taking responsibility? Uh, to be honest with you, Nigerians should take the advice of the NCDC very seriously. The spread is alarming and it is about to reach its peak now and this is the time we should all be very, very careful. We should observe social distancing, wear our masks, wash our hands, uh, and uh, use hand, hand sanitizers uh, as much as possible. And we avoid large gathering. And that's why, even in the Senate, we have decided that uh, we will sit weekly. And uh, we have been adhering to all the NCDC guidelines. Unless there is something very, very important, we don't just go to the Senate and sit because uh, we are exposing, you know, senators to the danger. Um, we, are, we don't hope that anything will happen, but it's good to take precautions. So we will adhere strictly to the guidelines given by NCDC and I urge all Nigerians to do the same. That's the only way we can save, you know, the spread of the infection. Uh, the state governments have to do a lot because the spread is now at the state level. If you watch the figures that are being released on daily basis, it seems to be rising, particularly uh, at state levels. Uh, the only way you can stop it. It's by observing social distancing, uh, wearing masks if you have to come out, and as much as possible, if you have nothing to do, please stay at home. Stay safe. Uh, that's the advice I can give to Nigerians. I want to commend the medical personnel, those who are risking their life, those who give their life, those who die in the course of fighting this uh, disease. Uh, we salute the medical personnel, but I must equally add that ever must be made not to see everybody that is sick as having COVID-19. You know, I think it's a very major issue. Uh, many hospitals do not attend to any patient any longer. They as once you fall sick, you have COVID. I think that is where the problem lies now. There are cases of pregnant women that were not treated, and they had to give birth in the open because. Medical personnel insisted that they must go for COVID tests. I don't know how that can be done. Like I said, we salute the medical personnel. They have risked their life. They are the soldiers in this, in this battle. Uh, and they are the unarmed soldiers in this battle. Medical personnel, we salute them. But they should please look at the possibility of making sure that um, not everybody will be subjected or compared or assumed to have COVID-19 when they are sick. It's not everybody who is having malaria is COVID-19. Okay, so I think that's the issue that is presently confronting our nation. I don't know whether that's tenable in other nations of the world, but I hold the view that in Nigeria, quite a number of medical personnel today find it difficult to treat patients with. There are people who had um, were asthmatic, but they were not attended to the die because it was out of fear that it could be COVID. There are people with uh, blood pressure, they assume that it could be COVID. There are people with um, uh, who are diabetic, they, they die because it was assumed it's COVID. 
I think those are the, the challenges that we are confronted with now. And I think these are the areas that call for attention apart from the treatment of those who have COVID. We must look at this other way and how to get it done. The situation where hospitals are rejecting patients because they are perceived to have COVID is most unfortunate. But again, um, we could understand why it was so. The medical personnel, they are equally human beings, you know, so, but I think we have to put the mechanism in place for that problem to be resolved. All right, distinguished uh, Senator Smart and Dean, many thanks for granting It's my pleasure. Well, that wraps up the program for this week. I'm Dennis at Digunloya. Until next time, thank you for watching and see you again soon. Thank you.